a world where God's love is made manifest. I loved a congregation that recognized that God is gay, that God is a lesbian, that God is bi, that God is trans, that God is gender non-binary, that God is black, that God is white. What? That God is Middle Eastern and Asian, that God is differently abled mentally and physically, that God is able-bodied. In short, that God is as we are because we are all a reflection of God's divine image. And let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non-binary God, whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads. Non-binary God? <laughs> what is going on? We here, we queer, we coming for your children. What in the world? God created humankind in God's image. Male and female, God created them. And some grown-ups read that line and they think that God created only male and female. I'm like, well, but that doesn't make any sense. Because we know that there's lots of people who are beyond and between male and female. I'm trans, right? Like, we don't have to go very far to see this. Wow. What kind of biblical exegesis was this? Hello friends, welcome once again to the YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about a number of things today in particular to share some warning and give some words of encouragement. We know the world has gone crazy, but when the church is going crazy, we, we got to talk about this matter. Listen, first of all, Seventh-day Adventist Church has a clear position on some of these social issues going into the world. We're going to read a statement from the official General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And not only that, we're going to watch a video. Let me share my screen with you. So we're going to go to the uh, official Adventist.org website and hear their statements on homosexuality. And we will also highlight RC, the Human Rights Campaign, where they are probably the largest, one of the largest voices for LGBTQIA plus persons, and you won't believe what they have to say about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And also, we have a video of Ted Wilson, which was released just about two or three months ago, where he spoke about the church's position concerning these issues. We're gonna get into this video right now. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page, click the bell icon for more. All these things matter in the YouTube world. Every thumbs up matter, and every time you give this video a thumbs up, it travels faster and other people gets to see what we got going on in this channel and check out what else we got going on in this channel as well. We do talk about the cultural issue. We do talk about the gospel. We do talk about Jesus. We do lift him up, but we are not afraid to call it what it is and expose the hypocrisy that might be happening in the world and as well as in the church, especially knowing that we are living in the final days. All right, let's get to the video, friends. The L, uh, the... Seventh-day Adventist Church released a statement, and I will say this was beautiful to read. By the way, there's been a little bit of edit of the statement, but generally this is the position of the church concerning LGBTQIA plus homosexuality and everything else that's going on with that. This is where the Seventh-day Adventist take, take a stand. The Seventh-day Adventist Church recognizes that every human being is valuable in the sight of God. Amen. And we seek to minister to all men and women in the spirit of Jesus. We also believe that by grace and through the encouragement of the community of faith, an individual may live in harmony with the principle of God's words. Ooh, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Let's keep going. Seventh-day Adventists believe that sexual intimacy belongs only within the marital relationship of a man and a woman. Hey, we're preaching now. <laughs> Amen. 
This was the design established by God at creation. The scripture declare, the scriptures declare, for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh. Throughout scripture, this heterosexual pattern is affirmed exactly the bible makes no accommodation for homosexual activity or relationships let me read that again the bible makes no accommodation for homosexual activity or relationships sexual acts outside the circle of a heterosexual marriage are forbidden and here are your scriptures to work with Jesus reaffirmed the divine creation intent. Have you read? Haven't you read? He replied that at the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. In the video that we watched earlier, they were saying there is an in-between. They were saying that God didn't mean it that way. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, he did. Let's read on. And he said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother um, and be united to his wife and they too will become what? One flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one. For these reasons, Seventh-day Adventists are opposed to homosexual practices and relationships. Hey! That's what I'm talking about. Did it say it? The Bible says it. So this is the statement. Jesus affirms the dignity of all human beings and reach out compassionately to persons and families and suffering, families suffering the consequences of sin. Exactly. He offers caring ministry and words of solace to struggling people. Yes. While differ differentiating his love for sinners, from his clear teachings about sinful practices has his disciples. Good. Seventh-day Adventists endeavor to follow the Lord's instruction and examples, living a life of Christ-like compassion and faithfulness. I agree with, I agree with every single word. And this is the reason why the human rights campaigns have something to say about the seven. By the way, guys, if you don't know who these people are, you need to look them up. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is like the foundation, one of the largest voices for homosexuality, transgenderism, LGBTQIA+, and how it has impacted the entire society. They're going into business. They're going into politics. They are advocating. They are lobbyists. They are going deep looking to convert the world bring them into lgbtqia plus indoctrination these this is a movement you need to understand this is an organization you need to really keep an eye on because they are all over the place now let's read on because it went on to say the seventh day adventist church a conservative Christian denomination with under 1 million members in the United States condemns same-sex practices and relationships. This is the problem. We're not condemning anything. We're just telling you what the Bible says. But again, this is the thing with wording. This is the thing with wording. When you read something like that, while they may not be coming at the Adventist church in a way that you think, but the people who are gay, homosexuals, pro-LGBT, the people who advocate for that group, those group of people, they will look at this and say, oh, these Adventists, <laughs> y'all a bunch of evil, unchristian, unloving, and uncompassionate people because y'all condemn same sex. You see, that's the problem right there. You're making an enemy of the faith by using words in ways that the scripture, why don't you just read what the Bible says? But let's move on. Official statements in 1866, 63, seven living in church emerged from an apoc apocalyptic movement that has expected Christ's return on uh, coming October 22nd, 1844. Hmm, yeah, got you. But again, in accepting the notion that the change in heaven occur rather than on earth, founder builders of the church focus on advent of Christ's new kingdom. Well, that's also biblical. So what's the point? And today, the church is anchored in the 20th fundamental belief. Okay, which include the infallible, 
infallibility of the scripture and focus on honoring God's creation. All right now. I'm glad you know that. Let's keep going. Including personal abstinence from alcohol, tobacco, and other substances harmful to the body. The church is organized across 13 worlds division with the North American division contain 1.1 million members operating a network of 850 schools and 13 colleges and universities. General conference sessions attended by approximately 70,000 members or held every five years to address the issues of the global church. I'm glad you know that. So now when it comes to the homosexuality and everything else that comes with that, they went on to say these things. Now let me pull one more website for you which we're gonna come back to according to the policy they went on to say uh oh let me read some more 2014 it is inconsistent with the church understanding of scripture teaching to admit into or maintain in membership person practicing sexual behaviors incompatible with biblical teachings neither is it acceptable for Adventist pastors or churches to provide wedding service or facilities for same-sex couples. There, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> this is biblical. Now, according to church policy, homosexuality is a manifestation of the church dis of the disturbance and brokenness in human inclinations and relations caused by the entrance of sin into the world. Okay. However, President Ted Wilson made a recent call for compassion, saying Christ was never rude, never needlessly spoke in a severe word, never gave needless pain to a sensitive soul. Amen. The church also, also determined that we do not condone singling out any group for scorn and derision. Yes. Yeah, we're making some noise over here. Now, here's the thing. Let alone abuse, steal, God's wrath that transcends time and culture does not permit a homosexual lifestyle. So despite the fact a person might have been through some stuff that led them there, yet the church cannot condone it. Yes, we can have compassion and sympathy and empathize and find ways to work with the individual, but we will not change our teachings and our doctrines to accommodate to a homosexual lifestyle the church is staying. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now, they went on to say a number of things again and again and talking. I think it's not. They didn't really say too many bad things apart from highlighting it. So the goal is if we just highlight what the Seventh-day Adventist Church believe, people who will see this will automatically have an issue with the Adventist Church because what? They're condemning homosexuality. Well, the Bible condemns sin in every form. It's not just homosexuality. We're not highlighting you to be a scorn and derision. We're not telling you turn or burn kind of thing. Yeah, if you don't turn, you will burn. But we would like to appeal with the love of Jesus first. And if you refuse to obey and listen, it's up to you. God is the judge, but we will not change our teachings and our doctrine in order to com accommodate to a sinful lifestyle. Here is Ted Wilson. Here is Ted Wilson. I'm done rumbling. Here is Ted Wilson <laughs> because this is what he said. He's the president of the General Conference in a meeting of uh, on, on April 10th, 2023. So this is fresh and recent news, and he's talking about um, human sexuality task force in the church. And this is significant because I shared you some videos in the beginning of the video uh, uh, of my of this video here is to show you what's going on in other churches. And the point is we need to be aware of how this thing is spreading like cancer in many denominations and how the denominations are capitulating and surrendering to the mob. And friends, we cannot do that. Let the pressure come, let the persecution come, let, let the haters come, but we must not change our position when it comes to sexuality based on scripture. We better not. So I love what Mr. Ted Wilson says. Uh, we're going to talk to you about a very serious item for a few moments. Um, not going to spend a lot of time and we're not even going to open it for discussion. 
Uh, but we want to inform you about what's happening. Maurice uh, Valentine, if you will just come up here to the pulpit for a moment. Several weeks ago, we organized a new committee. Uh, actually, it's a task force. You might say, well, that's nothing unusual for the General Conference. You're always organizing committees. <laughs> this one, as with most of the committees, uh, was done for a specific purpose. We organized what is called Human Sexuality Task Force. This particular task force has as its objective to draw on all of the resources, the materials that the church has from the Bible, from Biblical Research Institute, from voted statements, from other sources, to help our church members, and especially our younger church members, to understand what the Bible has to say about human sexuality. We are facing a huge onslaught of aggressive conditioning of people's minds from social media, from culture, regarding LGBT and other aspects. We need to treat all people with respect, with love, with care. But, my dear brothers and sisters, and those of you who are part of the General Conference Division and Attached Union Officer Group, you will know that we spent uh, about an hour together one week ago today in a special meeting to vote, or not to vote, but to, by common consent, a consensus statement regarding the human sexuality aspect and what the Bible teaches. You know, we vote different things, and those things are important. But what the Bible has to say is the most important. And uh, recently, as we reviewed this, we recognized we need to be much more proactive in helping our world church and especially young people who are so influenced by social media, by connection to the internet, to understand what the Bible says. Also, I would like to just share with you, because you're going to be hearing much more about this as we move into the next number of months. We need to be careful, and as leaders and as executive committee members, I'm looking at these six screens with names all over them from all around the world. All of us need to be very careful to not be influenced by aberrant theology, which will take the very words of the Bible and turn them upside down on the Bible's head. Ellen White tells us to read the Bible as it reads, verse upon verse, precept upon precept, line upon line, to understand that the historical critical method which has taken the ascendancy in theological circles for the last many decades is not the biblical method to use. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has documented that it uses the historical grammatical or historical biblical approach to allowing the Bible to interpret itself. Let us not allow aberrant theological views to misrepresent what the Bible says, not only in the area of human sexuality, but in the area of theology, of prophecy, of understanding who we are as a people. 
The Human Sexuality Task Force uh, will be producing materials, and you need to know this so you will not be surprised. They will be producing materials in small 60-second, 90-second sound bites, two-minute expositions, two-hour uh, presentations, two-day uh, summits, whatever it takes, in hard copy, in electronic copy, in every format, in every platform, to help share carefully, lovingly, with respect to all people, what the Bible says. Uh, Maurice Valentine has the uh, privilege and also dubious responsibility of chairing that task force. Uh, we also have Jeffrey Mbwana, Audrey Anderson, who are vice chairs, and Willie and Elaine Oliver, who are the secretaries. And we have a number of people who are on that task force, many of them being department directors who are directly uh, being... Yeah, you've seen that you heard that. That was clear, and I agree. I, I agree, I agree, I agree. Again, he talks about a number of things. Um, First of all, what Ted Wilson says that I, I mean, first of all, I want to say. Um, many times, there are folks online, they highlight everything that is wrong in a church all day, all night. It's like their entire ministry is to find something wrong with the church so that they can say <laughs> something about the church. But the point is, and when ministers and, and Ted Wilson and many others tell the truth, right? When they preach the truth, make sure you highlight them too. Make sure you acknowledge the good that is in the church, not just the wrongs. And it's okay to highlight what is wrong so that we can turn and repent. And nothing's wrong with that. But it's just failure to acknowledge both sides of the story is, is a major problem. But here's the thing. Um, there is something called the clobber scriptures. Uh, I'm trying to look for them now. And the clobber scriptures, um, the whole idea behind it is God the, the, doesn't, the Bible doesn't condemn sexuality. And they, they highlight about seven or eight scriptures. I'm going to have a separate video for that because that, that's another, that's another discussion in itself. And there's a whole book called Unclobber by uh, Colby Martin. I'm going to see if I can get not so much buying the copy, see if I can find it online somehow, listen to what this man is saying and read the Bible to see whether or not whether these things are so. By the way, this knowledge, this perspective is what is at the foundation of this new theology, LGBTQIA plus apologetics online. And this stuff is creeping in the church and there is a new interpretation about what the Bible says about human sexuality. And these people are telling you what you heard and what you see in scripture. It's not what it is. And I'm so glad that Ted Wilson acknowledges that. And he has a compassion for the youth and he understands what's going on with the young people, with social media, with the social contagion, with all these different ideas and abuse. And who knows, man? It could be a number of things that led people into that lifestyle. We just don't know. There needs to be loving, compassion, and understanding. But at the same time, we cannot change the message. We, we can't. The message remains the same, but we're going to love and care and understand you. But we will not sugarcoat the gospel to appease, to appease a sinful culture. Can't do it. Now, I'm glad he understands that. I'm glad there is a system in place to help people. I'm glad there's education happening. And this is good to know. This is good to hear. It makes sense. Now, going back to human rights, that says, they say that Ad Adventists are condemning homosexuals. First of all, this is the most loving appeal that I have heard about a uh, 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 human sexuality, transgenderism, homosexuality, and all that stuff, the queer and the lesbian, you name it. This is a loving appeal. This is not a condemnation. We don't have the power to condemn anybody. We're just human beings. <laughs> God is the judge, not us. However, we will not sugarcoat his gospel to make you feel good inside. We can't do that. We don't have the power to do that either. So now let's move on. I want to address this idea of condemnation because, uh, again, 
people like to say you just bigot and you hate people you we say, no, ain't nobody hate nobody. <laughs> I'm afraid of a lot of things. One thing I'm not afraid of is homosexuality. So stop calling me transphobic or homophobe. Now, let's move on. Um, here's the thing. The Bible tells us that this woman, and by the way, if you're struggling with same-sex attraction, go study, listen to my little secret here, go study the life of Mary Magdalene. If you're struggling with same-sex attraction, lesbianism, homosexuality, transgenderism, confused about your sexuality of any sort, study the life of Mary Magdalene. The victory that she won could be yours. Now, look at what it says. When she met Jesus, and I can highlight many things here. Here's the woman that was caught up in the act, and she was thrown to the ground, made a fool and mockery and exposed publicly. She was being used as a, should I say, a religious pawn to not only condemn, but also to go after Jesus. Jesus says, if you, any of you without sin, cast the first stone at her, right? And you know what happened? They walked away. But here's the beautiful side of the story. When the woman lifted up herself and saw none but uh, and, and when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no men condemned you? She said, No men, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn you. Now, this is important. What did Jesus just do here? If Jesus is not condemning you, what is he giving you? <laughs> what is he giving you? is giving you grace. Oh, come on, man. You didn't get that? There is, Romans 8, there is no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is no condemnation in Jesus because he, he extends his arms of grace and mercy. So he's giving her grace. He's giving her mercy for her sins. And the same is true for you and I. The same is true for the homosexuals today among us. They need grace and mercy from Jesus, not condemnation. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Unlike many people in the world today, and I would say some Christians are wrong for doing this. They're condemning the gays and the lesbian. It's, it's like hell, fire, burn kind of thing. I, I get you, man. I understand, bruh. But have some compassion, brother. <laughs> like, brother, turn off the heat, bro. Turn down the stove, okay? Calm down. But we can still tell the truth without burning the entire building down, man. <laughs> so slow down. So here's the thing. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Here's the next thing. Go and sin no more. First of all, he did not condemn the woman. He gave her grace and mercy. And after he's done, he sent her on her way with the possibility of victory. Now, people don't believe that today. They don't believe they can get victory over sin. They don't believe. A lot of Christians today will tell you, we're going to sin till Jesus comes. <laughs> that means you're going to burn. <laughs> so you need to stop. And don't get me wrong, friends. We all have our struggles. We all have our struggles and battles. What I say to you, I say to myself. I have to look at myself in the mirror every day and say, Lord, have mercy on me. But I do not live with this mindset that I will never overcome. I might struggle with my sin, but I know by the grace of God, eventually, <laughs> one of these days, as I'm wrestling and fasting and praying, the chain is going to break loose. I believe that. Oh, here's the thing. Jesus says, go and sin no more. Not go and send some more. Go and send no more. So Jesus set her free from her own sexual sins, by the way. Her issue was sexual sins. She was possessed with seven demons. She was using they, them pronouns. Okay, I'm stretching it. But here's the point. You get the point of what I'm trying to say? This woman, she got the victory at the feet of Jesus. Now, even after the statement was made, she was still in trouble. <laughs> She was still getting herself involved in some stuff. And that's why it's good to study her life. Because that same woman was there at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That same woman got the victory over sin. That same woman saw Jesus resurrected first. That same woman went on to preach the gospel to the apostles who were hiding and cowering in fear. This is the same woman. Jesus set free. It is the same woman. Now, some people may argue that's not really the case. Well, okay. Okay, that could be another discussion. 
But when I look at the Bible, what I realized, this woman here is the same Mary Magdalene that we find throughout Scripture. Now, if you say that's not it, you want to explain to me, ah, fine, we can have the discussion. But the point of the matter is this. Jesus says to her, go and sin no more. I don't condemn you. The church is not condemning gays and lesbian LGBT. Stop saying that. We saying the Bible says this about human sexuality and also all these different things about sins. In particular, in general, God addresses all type of sins, but we will not sugarcoat the truth of the gospel because the culture is changing. The church is adapting. Okay. The world is converting the church. No, 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 no. We refuse to be converted by the world. We are here to convert the world to the gospel. <laughs> You're not converting us. No, no, we're not coming over to you. You're coming over to us. But yes, we will reach over. <laughs> but we will not sugarcoat our message to appease a sinful culture. We can't do that. We don't have the right nor the power to do it. Ted Wilson, that was amazing. Thank you so much for listening, friends. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more if you enjoyed this reaction video. It matters how far the video goes. Every time you give this video a thumbs up, other people get to see the message, man. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I love you. Keeping you in my prayer. Set your eyes on him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.